Uh, the Dolphins head into their bye, having made uh, history themselves. Fourth team in NFL history to win five in a row after starting the season with a one and seven record. And after their week 14 bye, they get to play the New York Jets. So they could be sitting there at 500 with a quarterback yeah. looking mighty, mighty comfortable since the Deshaun Watson news stopped and a, a record setting rookie wide receiver. Damn, Thomas, that's a dope jacket. Is that leather? Yeah, it is. What are the <laughs> it's, it's got a green to it, too, just so you guys know. It's Tom Ford. That's that Tom Ford joint. <laughs> Ooh, killing him with it. He had that laid out. Yeah, that outfit like, laid out last night. Like, and, you know, and you know, hey, hey, Smith, you know who uh, rolled with Tom Ford? You know who does that? That's James Bond. So James Bond is, 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 is where Tom Ford suits. Time for Jack. Forget James Bond. He looking like James Dean in this mug, man. He looking good. <laughs> All right, uh, Thomas Dimitrov, our, our resident general manager's in here, man. You know Brian Flores very well. Um, you know we, we knew he was a good coach, but it looked like at one point that the bottom may be falling out on this team, and maybe it wasn't a Sean drama. Who the hell knows? But from your vantage point, what's coming together so well for the Miami Dolphins? Slash, how dangerous can they be down the stretch if not in the playoffs if they if they find their way there? Well, look, we we know Brian. All three of us know Brian. Brian is a together person. Brian and the way things are working within that organization and Chris Greer, they work together in you know in stride, step by step. They're working together. They understand each other. They understand the talent they're looking for. And the systems are looking for. I think they communicate really, really well together. Look, I was one of those people, Michael, at the beginning of the season. I was really concerned about where Tua was. And now you watch Tua. You watch Tua operate, a la, interestingly enough, Patriots paradigm. Put him in the right spot. Don't force him to go deep. Let him grow and continue to learn. He does a really good job maintaining it at a certain level, which has been impressive to see since a lot of the naysayers out there back to your Deshaun Watson comments, and, and then fold that into the idea that things are coming along so well with their defense. What? That's kind of Patriot-esque as well. Have that really kick-butt defense, grow and learn with your offense. To me, it's, it's a recipe for, for you know, continued success. Be interested to see how it will play out, however. Is there a is there a team that you're looking at here, uh, Thomas? And you're saying, okay, they're about to make a run, or or you, you're feeling like there's some momentum with them because we already mentioned uh, Arizona. I, I'm finally looking at Arizona, saying, wow, uh, they may be a great team. Is that the team? And if not them, uh, what other team is is catching your eye? Well, it, it definitely is. I don't, I don't want to just jump on the bandwagon to watch what Steve Kime and company are doing there and have done there this year. Going into a year that was very precarious, uh, had a lot of conversations with Steve, of course. Love how he operates with the head coach. I mean, he should be not going anywhere. I know there was some talk about maybe having opportunities. I love how those two guys approach, again, the team building. I love how they're coming along at so many different levels. They have a, a, a confidence about them and an air about them that, quite honestly, I wouldn't have wanted to play, you know, if I were to still be in my job coming against the, the Cardinals now, the way that they're operating, again, as an organization and as a, as a former team builder, that would have been one of the teams that I was very concerned about because they have something about them and they have a lot in their background saying, we're going to show all these people that have been throwing darts over the years who are saying that we, were, we should have been moved on as – team builders again back to to Steve and coach. I think that's very important. I love the way they're operating right now. I think it's a really cool organization. You touched on something that I want to get into with you. Um, hey, look, hey, play play the game, get your money. But the, the Cliff Kingsbury rumors uh, seemed a lot more like an opportunity to say hey, I'm in the last year of my contract. I may have leverage here. Now, obviously, you know, Oklahoma is, is set, since uh, hired Venables from Clemson which is a really good hire, by the way, uh, as an aside. But I really want to talk to you about the astronomical or the ascending uh, salaries when it comes to college coaches and the impact that it's going to have on NFL coaches and, and that salary structure. As a team builder, uh, what kind of attention should ownership upper management be paying uh, to coaches' salaries in college? And how does it 
maybe inform some of the decision making when it comes to how much they may may not want to pay a head coach at an NFL level. This is a really deep conversation, gentlemen, at a lot of levels, and we could talk for, for hours on it. My, my strong opinion out the gate is it's, I do believe this, and, and the owners, please don't get mad at me for saying this, but most general managers and head coaches in the NFL are looking towards collegiate coaches. When you see collegiate coaches making the numbers they're making, the nine plus million dollars a year, uh, the numbers that are, that are apparently astronomical, that is a really somewhat soothing feeling for, for our management and our team builders within the NFL because they realize that there is no way, I don't think, that the owner is going to look at that and say, okay, we're going to be seeing these college coaches making exponentially more money than, than up-and-coming head coaches. Think about this, gentlemen. When I first got back in here in 2008, and this is not even that long ago, but modern day, our head coaches were making an average of probably two and a half million dollars a year when Mike Smith and I jumped in and look where they are now for some of these new head coaches. Look what's going on, you know, in the collegiate ranks. Again, I think it's really good. People are getting paid. They're getting paid, uh, paid commensurate with what they deserve and, and what quite honestly organizations are earning in the NFL. We see that and what co colleges are earning. So I think it's really good. I know a lot of people out in the world have a tough time comprehending these numbers, but you always go back when you're talking about CEOs of massive corporations within the United States and the world and the money that those CEOs are making, it's not that far off. So, okay, so you look at these numbers at, at college, at the college level, will we start seeing that in the pros? I mean, in some cases, we have some of the upper tier coaches, Bill Belichick, Sean Payton, are already you know, at that number or higher. We start seeing it when owners come in and say, okay, let me tear up your contract and make it good. Or will it be the next guy coming from college to the pros who's going to kind of alter the salary structure? And in other words, how's that pro structure going to be altered in your opinion? I know we're guessing, but yeah. how do you think it changes? Michael, let me let me start by saying, and I don't mean to mock that that question about college coaches coming to pro. We we don't need to be laughing about that right now. That's a whole other situation. But it's going to set the tone. And again, how many times that we've looked at the pay scale when we're hiring head coaches and we're looking at position coaches and coordinators making the money they're making? Again, we look at that and then we start looking at our own our own staffs and our own head coach. So yes, it's the next contract. It's not right now. They're not tearing up the contracts, but when the next contract comes up for a stellar head coach in the NFL or a good head coach and above, they are going to be, they are going to be market increases. I can imagine, especially, especially seeing what's going on in the collegiate ranks. I think again, mm -hmm. there is no way in the world that these owners and these owners are competitive as well. It's, they're going to be working hand in hand. It's, it is quite amazing to see the numbers going where they are not only with head coach gentlemen head coaches gentlemen you start seeing the coordinators around the league and you start seeing exactly. the assistant coaches position coaches it's unbelievable step back a minute i remember when mike smith got fired from us in, in atlanta and he went to be the 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 uh, coordinator at the tampa bay buccaneers and if i recall correctly he was the first guy to break the three million dollar mark as a coordinator that was a number of years mm -hmm. ago so it's, it's pretty amazing to think of coordinators making $3 million plus, And believe me, it's exponentially more with the top, top seated uh, uh, coordinators. See how that, how that works, which is a whole other topic, gentlemen. You get GMs, I'm going to speak about this, who are making X amount of money, and they're seeing their coordinators now making three, four, and $5 million potentially, not five, but three and four, and they're making more than the average general manager, a coordinator, not a head coach, Mike, not a head coach, but a coordinator. And Michael, you know that they can buy all the Tom Ford they want to buy. They're, they know that those numbers are moving and they're moving fast. And it's not easy for a, for a GM to sit back and see a head coach making 9, 10, 11, 12, 14 million and have a GM who has ostensibly may have final football say making two and a half or three. That's a, that's a complicated thing to see for a lot of these guys. Well, it and then, see, you're right. And I don't mind. We got a little time. Mike, I don't know about you. I, I like this rabbit hole because then you're talking about the dynamic of partnerships where, well, you know, did the GM hire the coach? Was the coach hired first? Did they fire yeah. the, the GM and keep the coach? 
you know, there's there's that part. But then I also just to play devil's advocate with you and you talked about the coordinator of the staff salaries as well. Thomas, I saw this tweet earlier. Ninety four point four million dollars has been spent in 2021 on coaching buyouts in college football. So think about the amount of turnover in the NFL and how very few coaches are, you know, or, or get second or third contract opportunities like this. This there's very few long tenure coaches in the NFL. I wonder if it'll just be reserved for your Belichick's your Harbaugh's your Tomlin's to start making. Let's call it college money. But maybe what if everybody mm -hmm. else is just being turned over and because you're talking about am I going to commit? You know, te in, in the teens for millions of dollars to a head coach who I may be firing two years from now or three years from now, depending on how it goes. Does that make sense? I just wonder if it's like a select few hit the jackpot and the rest of them are kind of there's no middle class. In other words, in, in terms of head coaches, it's just turned over at the bottom. Well, I think there's going to be the, the, the high upper upper echelon who are making those unbelievable numbers. But it is increasing across the lines. There's no question. Is there a middle class? Well, if you're if you're arguing whether a middle class is seven, eight, nine million dollars a year, well then we're we're a little bit off. You and I need to go back and, and study economics a little bit because that is <laughs> crazy how things if if we're considering that middle class. I will also say, gents, I mean, you know this. When it comes to money, back to owners for a second. I mean, owners are very cognizant of what's going on around them in other leagues. You can you can talk about basketball. Some of our brethren in the basketball side, you know, the, the numbers for GMs are really, really high for their upper tier general managers, as well as their coaches, of course, some of those guys. You look at baseball as well, and you start talking about all of this. It's a it's a topic of conversation. And then we come back to again, like like you said, the assistants and coordinators, which we think about, which is a big topic. And then you start talking about middle class. Is it going to affect everyone else? Hell yes, it's going to affect everyone else. It, there's, there is no, there's no doubt about it. And it's going to affect the agents coming in who are now saying, using all of this, not only professional comparisons, their comparatives are now being drawn from college saying, wait a minute, you're paying a college coach. Yes, he's a college coach, maybe the best college coach in the world, but he's a college coach. There's no way they should be making five, six, or seven million dollars, or whatever it may be, than a pro, a pro ahead, head Mike. coach. Do I do it, do it Mike? You want, I know you, you, want, you want me to do it, or you want to do it? You want me to do it? You want me to do it? You want to do it? I'm gonna see. You sure? Let me okay. See how, if you Cause, represent cause, cause, my opinion in a fair way, so go ahead. Let's see okay. how uh, if you're a fair man. Okay. Go ahead. All right, because 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 technically it was your turn. Okay, uh, Thomas, Michael, and I have this back and forth, and um, let's see. All right, I'm gonna do it fairly, Michael. I'm gonna do it fairly. Okay. He see, says that see. he he says that college coaching is easier, not easy, but easier. To which I respond, I just think that's disrespectful. I think it's different, and the challenges and the, and and the process is different. But I wouldn't dare say that Nick Saban, for example, takes a back seat to Bill Belichick, just because Bill Belichick has achieved his greatness on a professional level where saving has done it on the college level. I just think it's different, but teaching and coaching, even if you're talking about players at the highest level, I get it's the highest level at the NFL. Yeah, right, 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 right. But I just don't know that I would say it's easier. Would you agree with that? That it's easier than NFL coaching? I would start. I would start by saying not to disparage college coaches in any way. And you're like, oh, here we go. I would only say there are some amazing college coaches that um, that, that do an ama do amazing work within their world. I would also say, remember this, Michael, that in in college you have an army of people working for you as a head coach. You mm -hmm. you know you have yes you have restrictions, but you have levels that they don't even talk about. They're not on the field, but they we won't even get into that. You know that there are so many levels of employees that are supporting the Nick Sabans of the world and, and sure. Kirby smarts of the world, which is great. That's how the system is set up in the NFL. You have to be the head coach who is the co-team builder with the GM. And then you have your staff of 20 to 25 to 30. And, and then you have your personnel department that you're working with. I would say, and I hate to part you two guys. I would say it seems <laughs> like the NFL has a lot more on their plate in this, in this. Now they're not dealing with, 
recruiting and all the other minutia. So that part of collegiate coaching is complicated. Right. But as far as team building and putting the team together, I would just have to lean toward the idea that it's, it's, it is really, really um, difficult and tough to be a, a head coach in the NFL. Ergo, I appreciate I you. That. Yeah. I thank you for being yeah. diplomatic. Thank you for being, thank you yeah. for putting that nicely. Instead of saying hey. like, Michael, get the hell out of here. Cause, cause Michael Holly, hey. I recognize that no NFL team lines up and could just say, we got better athletes than you do and you got no chance of winning. Like every yeah. NFL team, the other guys are getting paid too. I get all of that. I just don't like you disrespecting great college coaches. You know what I wonder? All. You know what I wonder, Michael and Thomas? I wonder about the grueling recruiting season right now for Alabama. Uh, <laughs> seven, out of eight, seven out of eight years in the college football playoff. Uh, undefeated last year won it. How many times have they won it? I mean, they always... I, okay, I'm going to tell you their recruiting class in 2023 or 24 will either be one, two, or three. <laughs> I mean, come on. They make it look he easy. Keeps, he makes it, it because, look easy. Hey, yeah, look, because the, the guy program. is doing the guy is doing Aflac commercials now. No way Nick Saban would have been doing that. I mean, things are have gotten a little <laughs> right. bit. He's That's sitting true. doing true. Aflac commercials. I can't believe it. Sometimes does a hell of a job That's with them, given who. You know his background. We don't expect the sort of Belichickian uh, uh, group to do that, but that's what's happening. He's yeah. a rock star now, uh, Nick Saban, rock star. Final question for you. We've talked about, and I, I just want to, you know, given your background, I want you just to weigh in on this. I, I wonder if you thought when you were uh, your last season with the Patriots, uh, the 2007 season, I believe it was, and you know Tom Brady is 30 years old. If you thought, yeah, you know. In 15 years, 14 years, Tom Brady will still be the top quarterback in the NFL. I mean, this is just mind boggling to me. How do you process it? No, it's mind boggling. Even though, as you know, my, my penchant for eating well and, and mind, body and soul, I thought when he started eating that many avocados, like this cat's got something, man. I think he's lasting a little longer than the rest, but no, I'm, I'm completely floored by it. And I love seeing it. I think it's, I think it's great for the league to know that we can continue to pay people who are focused and all about winning and competitive. I think that's such a special mark for a guy like that. So I love seeing it. I got one last question before we let you go is how do you see tonight's game playing out? Um, you know, I've, mm. I've been crazy thing is I've been on the Patriots bandwagon and I've had to drag Mr. New York Times bestselling author Boston Sports Tonight co-host onto the Patriots bandwagon with me. Crazy enough. So at Buffalo tonight, uh, I, I like the Patriots to win this thing, um, even against a tough opponent. I love their defense. I think they've done what y'all always did in New England back in the day, Thomas, which was just get better as the year goes on. And Buffalo, for as talented and as good a team as they are, they seem to find ways, whether it's penalties or untimely turnovers, of beating themselves. How do you see tonight's game going? Well, let me start by saying Sean McDermott and, and Brandon Bean – I think that couple of head coach and GM are second to none as far as how they operate together. Very important that I lead in because I think they've done some really special things with that organization. They have this sort of Socr Socratic thought and approach, know what they know and know what they don't know and understand it together and deal. That's what a true coaching head coach relationship is, making sure that they work together. And I think they do a really, really good job with that. Let's flip over, as you know, however, to the, to the Patriots. And I've said this and people get sick and tired of hearing me kind of as the homie because I'll always have an appreciation for Bill at all. And here is Bill Belichick, who is the best ever, arguably. And you have a genius like offensive coordinator who takes a quarterback and utilizes him and the talent around him to the best of their ability, which is, by the way, key, which is, by the way, very important when you're putting the numbers that we're talking earlier on coordinators. If that coordinator is, is adept at utilizing his talent effectively, man, I think the sky's the limit. I think Josh and his approach with Bill with an amazing defense, I think a really, really good defense. Uh, as yeah. much as I like the Bills and their development, I, I really like where New England is right now going into this game. All right, Thomas Dimitrov, we appreciate right, you, man. Uh, and definitely appreciate that jacket. I don't That's know if the there's a... Uh, you know, NFL That's modeling a, opportunity for you or something like that. Talk about commercials. You need to be in commercials.
<laughs> and I'm just trying to keep the gray hair in check. It's not stopping. <laughs> and, All right, brother, you, thank and, you. And the great thing is, I think it's about, I think it's my size. I think I can fit it. <laughs> if you were so inclined, I don't know to if you can pull it on. on. I don't know if, if you, so, you can pull it off. So inclined. Oh, not like that. Not like that. Look, that but. I know got, you guys got to leave. Got the hair. I gotta leave you. You got to leave here quickly. I had a closet full over the years. I hate to admit this of Montclair purchases, and I've been dealing them out to a number of my friends who are coming by who are cyclists who are fairly, fairly slim there, Michael. And I'm like, hey, look, I just need to clear my closet figuratively and literally speaking as I change my world. So it's it's okay. it's kind of helping me kind of clean my mind and cleanse my world a little bit. I'll have to share some power before I can get in your good, clothes. So. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Be good, I got man. people, I got so people in Atlanta. I got people <laughs> down there. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.